Hello guys, in this video we're going to look at reading from the I.O. port on the TI-83 Plus series of graphing calculators. So, reading from the I.O. port. TI Basic cannot by default read from the I.O. port without some sort of driver. Luckily, the driver is so simple we can create it on the calculator itself. This can be done in three simple steps. First, create a new program. Second, write the hex codes for the driver. And three, compile it. So, for first thing, step one, create a new program named theta n. Write out the program. So as you can see there are two different codes here. Make sure you write the codes for the right calculator. I have the calculator listed here for each code. So basically if your calculator is monochrome you use this, this code. If your calculator is a color screen you use this code. And ASM 84C PRGM and ASM PRGM these are found in the catalog. So, make sure you write the hex codes exactly as written, because if you mess it up, you can crash your calculator, it'll dump the RAM, and that'll be a big problem, because you'll lose any file you had stored in RAM. So make sure these hex codes are written exactly as you see them. Then, once you're done, you compile the program. You use this with ASCM comp. This function, this is found within the uh, catalog. So we just put as the first argument PRGM theta n comma PRGM n. That's why I like putting theta in my file names because it just I just use it to represent this is source code. Then without the theta, that's the compiled program. This will generate a program called the, um, program just called n. So you can delete theta n afterwards. You don't need it anymore. You just need the program n after you compile it. To read from the I.O. port, you first need to call the program n. Then the read value of the I.O. port will be stored in ants. The read values are inverted from the write values. We'll look on more on this later. So, as you can see, I just say ASM PRGM n, and then disp ants. So, um, when you call this ASM PRGM n, the value will be stored in ants. So I can just display ants, and it'll display the value. So here are the read values. So if you read a 0, that means the tip is low, the ring is low. A 1 means the tip is high and the ring is low. A 2 means the tip is low and the ring is high. And the 3 means the tip is high and the ring is high. So if you've seen the last video, this is an inverted table from the read, the write values. So the read values are inverted from the write values. And if you notice the read values, um, if you treat the tip as a one digits place in binary and the ring as the twos digit place, um, it's as if it's counting up. So this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three. It's as if it's counting up in binary. So here's a simple program, program read. This will basically every second just dis read a value and display it. So as you can see, I got two calculators connected um, by an, by the link cable, and I'm going to run the program clock, and on this calculator I'm going to be running read. Whoops. I'm going to be running read. So as you can see on the uh, second calculator, it is starts reading threes, and the reason it's reading threes is because three is the default. Um, so it's if you could just read while no information is being sent, it's just going to keep giving you the value 3, because that's the default value. Remember, for the write end, the default value is 0. But since the values are inverted on the read end, 3 is the default. So now I'm going to run the program clock and look how the uh, read values change. So you now change from 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. So now you can kind of see more why I called the program clock, because it actually, when you read the value from it, it's actually counting up. 0, 1, 2, 3, then it loops. 0, 1, 2, 3. 